In the gallant days when history hung on the flight of an arrow or the slash of a sword. When feudal barons ravaged the countryside to live in pomp and splendor. It is truly colorful, exciting, fascinating entertainment every minute of the way. Moon Sea Adventures. Hello and welcome to Moon Sea Adventures. The gang is back and uh, just as a recap, um, after a bit of deception and um, some trickery, the group was ready to bring the sailors and sneak them aboard the, um, the mysterious ship that has been set off in quarantine in the bay um, in Flan. And as the group was making their, their sneakery to get onto the ship, the Blessed Trident, um, they heard the sounds of guards approaching. So you guys had decided to move quickly um, and, and kind of abandoning the stealth maneuver. Um, you now have your skeleton crew that you have to get on board that ship. Um, you guys are on the docks already. You are at the pier, the entrance to the long pier that heads out in the direction of where the ship is. Um, but 30 feet behind you are a contingent of guards, um, a few of whom have what look to be bows. So you guys have a, a little bit of a head start. Um, let's go ahead and roll initiative. No better way to start off a game then good old initiative. Can't go wrong with initiative. 15 for me. Nice. 16 that's a total. One. Oh, wait. Plus my... That's a three in total. Oh, Siler. Uh, Ushun? 11. Why? All right. Dice jail. All right. So, um, Siler, you have... I don't know how this is possible, but somehow um, you have a worse initiative than the guards. So, Angler, you are actually up first. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to roll for your crew. Now, your crew has no intention of fighting whatsoever, but the degree to which they move quickly is important. Because if you don't get enough of them to the ship alive, you won't be sailing out of the harbor. So here we are. Angler, you are up first. You hear the sounds of the guards. They are 30 feet behind. What is your move? Well. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let me interject one more thing. Um, just so, so those of you watching understand um, the, the pier that they are on is the longest pier that heads out into the bay. It is 120 feet long to the tip of the pier. And then beyond that, it's another 120 feet in the water to where the ship is anchored. So with that in mind, carry on. I'm going to, since we're at the start, turn around and uh, toss a flask of oil on the ground at the front of the pier. Okay, and so be, in other words, toss the oil behind you to prevent the guards from following? Yeah, and uh, okay. hope that someone catches on. Okay. All right. You uh, you definitely... Now, that's that's just a simple action, so you, you still have the rest just, of your stuff. I'm just running. Okay. Dash, bonus action, dash. Okay, so, so you toss the flask behind you, the open flask, it spills all over the wooden docks, and you haul. Okay, good. Um, you are way ahead. Harley, you saw, hmm, you know what? It is night, so. Yeah. Let I'm about to see me throw something. Yes. Here's, here's what I'm thinking. Because, Harley, you, you're going to need to make a perception check. You do uh, not have a great passive perception. You know, I'm not a very perceptive guy. Oh, shoot. Uh, ha, 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 ha. perception it's uh, 18 all right so you actually see angler toss this this um skin of oil this flask of oil yeah it's not a skin it's a flask 
and toss it behind it, and you hear it, it bounce and spill oil all over the wood behind you guys. Uh, so the oil spill is uh, between uh, us and the guards. Yes. May I press the digitate uh, a small fire to light up the oil? I would see no reason why you could not do that. So I press the digitate fire to light the oil okay and i yell to the uh, to the crew okay boat rats run for your boat lives and run for the boat okay and i'm staying like oh well, i move 15 feet uh, towards the boat and i'm standing guard okay Excellent. Um, up next is the crew. They heed your words and they run full speed. Um, they, they basically make it halfway um, down this, this long pier, uh, which then brings us to Ushun. Okay. Um, I'm staying uh, behind the guards uh, behind the um, the um, sailors, and I'll, I'm doing that strategically to take hits. So I'm I'm running to catch up with them, but I'm still staying behind them. Okay, got it. So you you make and it halfway. Yeah, that's um, that's my full action to run. Okay. And dash. Sounds good. You you make it uh, halfway. All right, the guards. Um, so the first six guards get to the edge of the line of fire. And so they're, they're basically, none of them are going to run through the fire. The bowmen are going to run up. 20 feet and then fire. A nine, a seven, an 18, and a one. Hmm. Juicy. <laughs> Who does the 18 go after? One, two, three, four. Ushun. <sighs> You get hit. Oof. Ouch. You get hit for eight damage as a arrow from one of the longbows flies. And indeed, accomplishing your task, you, you provide living flesh meat cover for the sailors. Um, I can tell you. As much as that arrow might have hurt you, you feel like it would have killed one of these scrawny sailors. Um, how are you doing on hit points? Oh, I'm at, I'm, I'm at full. Okay. Well, now you're at eight less than full. Yes, I got but it. The good thing is that it is now Siler's turn. Yep. Um, as I'm bringing up the rear, I'm spilling out my kelp drops up to the edge of the fire. Okay. Just dumping them out on that little, uh, st um, wide strip of the, uh, pier. Okay. Uh, and if I, if I able, uh, I'm taking my uh, uh, remaining action as movement, uh, catching right. up. I, I'm going to say that you can move 30 feet while dumping off caltrops behind you. So you now you've got the fire blocking the pier, and then the first 30 feet of the pier, because you were kind of like the last man down the line, mm -hmm. um, is is caltrupped as well. Dumping. Um, you would have to sh stop short. Actually, no, now that I think about it, you'd be able to do 15 feet. So you, you move 30 feet, but you have 15 feet of, um, Caltrips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that just one bag? No, I'm tossing all 10 bags. Yes. But, but, well, but here's the thing. He, he's, he's tossing them out, but then you get to Harley who didn't run the full distance. 
Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to overtake. Okay. So um, that brings us back to the top of the order. So Angler, you are the, actually you are the farthest ahead. So you, you are at, you are at the, the first of the rowboats. If you wanted to jump into a rowboat or you have 30 more feet till the end of the dock. If you wanted to run and dive off and swim. I'll go to the end of the last rowboat. If okay. there is more than one. Yep. There are three. So the rowboats are spaced out in the last 30 feet of this dock, like every 10 feet. So you could actually run because of your, your rogue uh, dash action. You, you could run to the edge of the dock, jump down into the rowboat and start untying it if you want. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Um, Harley, you are up. You see that there are caltrips between you and the fire now. And you see Siler is kind of ready to move past you. Okay, may I uh, use the bonus action to command Murmur to fly um, behind the guard and yell something like, look, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> then I'm going to run 30 feet and blast one archer with the Eldritch Blast. Okay. So you command Murmur. I'll adjudicate that next. Uh, go ahead and roll for Eldritch Blast. Crap. Uh, <laughs> 12. That's a hit. Roll damage. Four. Uh, not 12. 12 exact? Yep. Dead. <laughs> um, you shoot one of the, the longbowmen and blast him back. He falls back. Uh, Murmur flies... Uh, well, basically, Murmur does what you said. Murmur flies over and, and creates noise and distraction from behind. Um, I'm going to make a roll to see how effective that is. Uh, you see a couple of the guards look over, but the other ones are kind of more focused on what's lying around you guys. Um, your crew... Okay, they're up next. So the crew, um, the first four of them jump down into the first rowboat. The second four of them jump down in the second rowboat. And the third four of them make it to the end of the pier by the rowboat where Angler is, but they do not get into it yet. They're on their way. Which brings us to Ushun. Okay, um, are there any uh, sailors still on the dock? Uh, that are running the last four that have not climbed down into the last rowboat they're at the end of the dock okay um well i'll run down to the let me see i have 30 feet of movement how far is the uh, is the first rowboat you can make it to the first rowboat and get in. Okay, I'll do that. I'm going to specifically position myself at the stern, okay. kneel, kneeling down. Okay. Um, all right, you can do that. The guards. So I'm going to have a couple things. You see the first four guards, not bowmen, um, they are running off away from where you guys are to the edge of the docks, and they, it looks like they're lowering something into the water. Uh, the other three bowmen, sorry, one of the guards picks up a bow and loads an arrow, but he won't fire this round. The other three bowmen that didn't get killed by Eldritch Blast are going to shoot uh let's see 13 9 and 15 so the 13 
is going towards one, two, three, four, five. Siler, what's your armor class? Thirteen is going to miss. Okay. Fortunately for you, that's a miss. The 15 is going towards one, two, three, four. Oh, no. One of your crew. Well, losing one guy is not bad. Oh, how how lucky. He's not dead. <laughs> I, I rolled a two. So one of the crew in the second boat gets hit with an arrow, but is he's like, ah, but he's, he's not dead. Um, which is a good thing for you. All right. Siler, this brings us to you. You dodged an arrow as, as it was flying right at you. You just ducked to the side. I mean, it's, you could hear it whip past. All right. Um, did I see the other guy get hit? You heard it. All right. Um, Oh, well you have night vision. So yeah. yeah, you saw it. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, can I make it to that second boat and get in there with him? Yes. All right. I'm gonna go over and get in, get to get to his boat. Okay. And then I'm gonna um, pull uh, pull the arrow out and uh, use cure wounds. Okay. Um, that's a yeah. That's one d eight. That's a four plus. So what was my modifier? He is uh, plus one. That's five he is points. Feeling fantastic, and he's in awe. He, he's like, "Oh, uh, thank you!" And you hear one of the other sailors like whisper, "They're like elvish magic," and they're. Um, this brings us to top of the order, angler. Um, holding. You see that there are four dudes uh, uh, fixing to climb down and get into the boat that you're in. I'm gonna hold my turn for them, and uh, okay. Also, Harley, he can fit, right? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna hold my turn until both the crew and Harley are in, and then I'm gonna take my action. I have two turns to get there. To stroll. Uh, I think Harley can still get to the first boat. You might be able to make it to the last if you oh. double dash. If I'll do the dash action, yeah. Okay. That'll be my action or holding action. Okay. Um, so, well, then Harley. Okay. I'll dash towards the boat and uh, I'll command the murmur as we see that uh, those guards are lowering something into the water to go there. Maybe in the process, tell me what it is and then. Um, like grab one guard uh, uh, by his face and uh, sting him with a stinger. Okay. Um, so first he relays to you that they are lowering buckets into the water on rope. Um, make a stinger attack roll. <sighs> Oh, crap. It's four plus the thing plus five, nine. So he, he doesn't quite get the stinger in. Like the guy kind of like swats him out of the way um, just as he was about to sting him. Well, it should be more like a distraction. Yeah. Because it's so one, one of the guys grabs you by the face. Yeah. One of the guys isn't isn't quite able to to do that. Um, all right. So then we have crew. So um, the boat that Siler is in and the boat that Ushun is in, the crew starts rowing um, and they start moving away from the dock. Um, this brings us to Ushun. Um. Okay, are they making decent progress? Well, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not like an engine where it just fires up and they go, but they just they just started rowing. So 
I'm going to say that half, you know, the, the, in the first round they're they're able to go five feet out. And then once they're up to speed next round, they'll be able to row 15 feet each round. I'm asking one of the sailors, uh, would more strength push this rowboat out faster? No, but be ready to throw knives or shoot arrows or whatever you do. Um, I'm going to be kneeling right here, taking hits for you guys. Don't worry about me. Okay. Just stay low in the boat. Got it. Um, this brings us to the guards. So three of the guards, not four, but three of them successfully bring water buckets up and begin splashing the water to douse the oil, some of which just spreads the oil <laughs> and some of which actually douses it. Um, and then the bowmen. Uh-oh. I got a three, nine, a five, and a 20. Oof. So uh, let me roll for the three and the five are a miss no matter what. The nine might be a miss. One, two, three, four. Ushun, is a nine a miss? Yes. Okay. The 20, who's going to die? Uh-oh. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So one of your crew members. Oh, unlucky crew. Which boat? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Let me see. Which boat? One of the crew members on boat number three. Oh, so, so the guys um, imagine this, right? Like the guys are climbing down into angler's boat and the last guy down gets hit by an arrow through his neck, dies instantly and splashes into the water. Well, damn. 16 damage. That's brutal. Um, so, but uh, this brings us to Siler. Yeah. Um, roll as fast as you can, guys. Um, and go to the far side of the boat so they can get to us. Okay. And then I'm going to be in the You're stern rolling. and um, taking out my bow. Okay. Angler, what did you do? I know you held action. So once once the remaining people got into your boat, did you guys row out? Stroll. 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 Okay. Um, they're they're going as fast as they can. Um, top of the order. Um, back to you, Angler. You see. Uh I'm trying to think how far you could see. Not very. I don't have dark vision. Well, yes. So there's flames. There, there are lanterns. So you could see down the dock, not with great precision, but you could see down the dock that your flaming oil has been kind of dissipated. And you see movement, some of the guards who are holding lanterns. Um, but you guys are rowing. <laughs> and then... Um, they're rowing. Harley, you you're in the boat. You you see, you know, the, the fire uh, dissipating and you see lanterns of guards as they're kind of they begin moving down the dock. What what do you want to do? Uh, okay, I presume that uh, more dangerous are uh, archers. Yes. So and it looks like it looks like one of the other guards picked up the bow of the guy that you had killed. Okay, so uh, I'll shoot one guard uh, with the bow with the elder with the eldritch blast. Okay. So it's uh, <laughs> crap ten. Ten's a miss. And, and it's, it's pretty, it's like pushing the edge of your range, right? Cause you got 120 feet. Yeah. So you, you fire off and it, it just flies just by them. And 
I command Murmur to um, cause some havoc, like uh, pick some random lantern that's uh, somewhere uh, on the pier or near the building and smash it on the top of some wooden buildings. Oh, okay. Um, let's see if that works. I hope so. <laughs> All right, pretty good. 19, so... Uh, two of the guards are distracted and will not act this round. Uh, this brings us to Ushun. Okay. Um, are you taking defensively actions? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm making myself the tallest person in the boat, but okay. I'm not standing up. Okay. Um, and I tell them we need to go to the far side of the the seaward side of the boat. I think that's right. Right. Anyway, we need to go that there. Okay. We're going to climb the first rope we can find. All right. So um, you see the lanterns of guards moving forward. However, now they must make deck saves versus Caltrops. <laughs> so the Caltrops. first four guards, two of them succeed, two of them fail and take damage and immediately stop moving. Uh, the next square that the two who made <laughs> fail, fail. So um, the, you you have guards that are stopped within the first 10 feet um, of the dock, and the other two guards were distracted by murmur, so actually no forward progress of any significance has been made. The longbowmen have a very long range. Yes, they do. Um, yes, indeed, they do. So, but they're actually pushing pretty close to the edge of their range. Um, next round, you guys will be beyond their, their range. So, um, 13, 13, 12, 12. Well, those could be hits depending on who we have here. So the first one is against member of the crew. Second one is against Harley. Third one is against uh, Ushun. And the fourth one is against member of the crew. So um, Harley does a 13 hit. Yeah, that's exactly my AC. Okay. Uh, Ushun does a 12 hit. Yes. Okay. The damage accordingly. Uh, Harley, you take two. Ushun, you take three. Um, crew member number one that got hit. Oh, another one bites the dust. And oh, that guy got lucky. All right. So, which boat was he in? Boat number. Uh, so, the crewman that just got hit for 10 damage and got killed was in boat number three. So, another, another one of Angler's poor guys. Um, the guy who got hit for only one hit point of damage was in boat number two. So that's uh, Ushun's boat, right? No, it's Siler. Oh, Siler's boat. Okay. So, so far, so good, um, except you have now officially lost two of your crew members. Mm -hmm. um, we take a moment to pause while I reflect on the map. Okay. So um, that was a little bit painful, but... Um, at the beginning of the next round, as all of you guys are rowing, now you are from the edge of the dock, almost 150 feet. So that means you are, let me see, the first boat or the furthest away boat would have been um, Angler's boat. So 15 feet out from that means not that far. Um, I'll my turn first. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You go after the guards. Yeah. I came in dead last. <laughs> um, Sometimes it comes in handy. Yeah. Well, I had my bow out. So I'm going to go for um, probably the middle uh, bowman. Okay. Uh, they're all close together, right? Uh, 
Well, they're not like shoulder to shoulder. They're kind of spread out along the edge. But um, yeah, they're 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 basically right before the pier. They haven't stepped through onto the Caltrop. So yeah, all right. That's uh, a uh, plus four. 19 hit for four six damage yeah six damage okay he falls back in pain all right and was there another one within five feet of him yep all right then i use my horde horde breaker and go for the second oh boy uh that's a four uh six miss. to hit miss and would have only been three damage anyway. That okay. was a low roll. Dang. All right. Um, so top of the order, Angler. Um, you are now it's you're, you know, from where you were, you've gone 30 feet. So you're about 90 feet away from the uh the ship. It'll just keep rowing. Okay. Um, and at this point, the, the sailors are, are kind of trying to make the best speed that they can. Um, Harley, you're up. Okay. Are we still in range? I presume not. Um, you, with Eldritch Blast, could hit the two guards who made it into the second um, span of Caltrops. They are okay. still within 120 feet of you. Okay. I'll stand in the ship, so I'm the easier target for the uh, for the bowman. I shoot uh, one guard with the Eldritch Blast. Okay. Go ahead. So it's uh, uh, 13. That's a hit. Roll damage. Uh, six. Okay. And I'll command uh, Murmur to do something in the range of uh, grab another lantern and smash it on the head of one archer. Okay. Hmm. Let's see if that is possible. Oh, success! With an 18. <laughs> um, basically, Murmur knocks off one of the lanterns from a light post and it lands on the guard's head. Um, okay. So that is success there. The crew continues rowing. This brings us to Ushun. Let's go, Hardies. Let's go. We're almost there. Let's go. Go. Okay. I don't know if that's persuasion or intimidation. But... Yeah, you, you successfully persuade them in a, an encouraging way. Um, Bowman fire. And possibly someone is going to be hit because I rolled a 16 to hit. Siler does a 16 hit. Exactly. Man. You take two as an arrow pierces you. Um, these guards, one succeeds, one fails on the Caltrop's roll, and the other two fail. So the other two haven't moved. So one bowman has successfully moved forward, and one guard, that's it. The rest of them now are still held back by your Caltrop's and um, are now out of range. Uh, Siler, you are up. Yeah. Um, was there still... Uh, am I out of range now? With Well, you could still hit any of the guys who are trapped in the Caltrops. Yeah, a one of them being a bowman. Yes. Yeah. All right. It's a uh, 11. Miss. 12 is the hit. Darn it. Is the other guy within five feet of him? 
Uh, yes, trapped in your caltrops. All right. Let's see if we can get that. We got, oh, oh yeah, that should be a hit. Uh, Twenty-two. Yeah, that's definitely a hit. And it's four. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Keep rolling, boys. Um, angler. Still rowing. Still rowing. Okay. With all my bird strings. Your your uh, your sailors are rowing as fast as they can, and you guys are actually uh, the closest of the rowboats to the ship. Um, Harley, your group is still. Oh well, you're in the same boat. Um, you are yeah. up. So. Oh. So you are out of range now. Yep. Um, I'm still standing just to be sure I'm uh, providing cover for the sailors. Yeah. And I'll command Murmur just to uh, be some annoyance for the guards. Okay. Like hopping on them and so forth. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to make another roll. Um, what's, what is your, your, do you have the invocation for, um, chain master? Uh, yep. Okay. All right. I'm going to have and make another roll. Uh, this one was not as effective. He has distracted this route. All right. Crew is rowing. This brings us to Ushun. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. We're almost there. Okay. Remember, the far side of the boat, climbing All right. the first rope we see. So, guards, Caltrops rolls. One makes, one fails. One fails, one makes. Longbow. Somebody's going to get hit with an AC of 17. One, two, three, four. Um, Ushun, you get hit with a uh, arm for armor class 17. Oh, yeah. You take three more damage. Okay, I can handle that. All right. Um, this brings us to now. So two of the guards have made it clear the warpath of the Caltrops and one of the longbowmen have. The other ones are all stuck in the 15 feet of Caltrops. So um, this brings us to you, Siler. Yep. Um, Going to lose another arrow. Okay. Oh, come on. It's uh, nine. Nope. Um, all right. And the yeah. other guy? Was he yeah. still close? Or? Yeah, you could hit one of the guards. Uh, that Second roll is always better. Come on. Uh, 17. All right, that's a hit. Nine. That drops him. So he falls dead in the caltrops. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, like he, you shoot him and he spins and falls into the caltrops. He's a caltrops. Um, all right, Angler. You and Harley are, your boat now is only 45 feet away from the ship. You are getting closer. Oh, yeah. Uh, you don't have dark vision, though, do you? No, I, okay. I have a lantern. Well, yeah. So, I mean, you, you, you see through the moonlight, you see the ship, the ship up ahead. Um, so you guys continue rowing. Uh, Harley, you're up. So there is one uh, archer that is uh, uh, that uh, is uh, on the pier that is uh, shooting at us. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's one archer and one guard that are within 120 feet of you. The other ones are further back. Okay. Uh, murmur, attack that bastard with the bow. 
<laughs> and I yell uh, to the sailor, Okay, you scurvy dogs, row faster! Okay. Your life uh, depends on it. <laughs> make, make me a persuasion check to see if you can inspire them. I want you to intimidate them. <laughs> oh, well, then intimidate them, yeah. I suppose since there's arrows raining down and your boat has lost yeah. the most people, they're probably easy to intimidate. 11. <laughs> yeah. So you, you intimidate them and they, they kind of like, you sense that they don't even need any encouragement. They're already trying to go as fast as they can because two of their buddies have already died. Um, all right. This brings us to... The crew, uh, and they are rowing. Uh, Ushun, you continue to encourage your your crew. Your ship is moving along, and the guards. Um, three successes moving through the Keltrups. So those guys are not going to shoot or do anything because they're picking up bows. The archer who still is on the within range of you guys has a 17, which is only going to go from either um, of the first two boats, which would be either Ushun or Siler's boats. Um, it's who is on boat number two? Siler or Ushun? Siler. I don't know which boat I'm on. <laughs> you're on the first one. I think you're on the first one. All right. So, Siler, you're going to take two more hit points. Oh. Um, the gray is across the cheek. I can handle it. Yeah. Pretty nifty scar. I That's can appreciate it. that. They can't do anything else this round, um, which brings us to you, Siler. Yep. Um... Oh, well, yeah. I keep forgetting it, basically. Um, I'm going to go Hunter's Mark on um, the first, uh, that first bowman. Can you make it from that distance? Yeah, he's the first yeah. bowman is the one that made it through the Caltrop. So he moved and shot each round. Okay. So okay. he's almost at the end of the pier. Okay. Yeah. Um, which means technically he could <laughs> he could continue to shoot arrows once you guys even get on the ship. But mm -hmm. um, all right, so go ahead. So he's got his hunter's mark on him. Oh, come on. That's a one. Wow. That is. Why do I even? <laughs> that is tough. Um. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh -huh. going to bring us to the top of the order with Angler. Thanks, You're Jim. 15 feet away from the ship. You could see it now within your lantern light. You could see the edges of the ship. They're going steady. Don't okay. have the boat too hard. Okay. Um, Harley, same thing. You, from from the lantern light illuminating uh, coming from Angler's lantern, you see the the edge of this big caravel. It's fifteen feet away. Okay. Uh, guys, row on the other side of the boat that's facing the sea, and I uh, command to murmur to fly towards the bowman that's shooting us, grab his face, and make himself visible. Just to okay. blind the archer. You, you send him to do this. He does. I rolled a 19, and he effectively succeeds in surprising and stinging the archer. <laughs> Who now... That's so so ridiculous. Um, <laughs> who's who is now going to make his saving throw, which he makes, um, but still takes a point of damage as uh, as he's surprised and stung. 
and will not be shooting this round. Um, this brings us to the crew. So uh, the crew in Angler and Harley's boat continue rowing straight towards the boat. Um, and the lead man does a running jump off and splashes into the water and starts climbing up the boat. Um, this brings us to Ushun. So your boat is still about 45 feet away, but you have dark vision. You were able to see the ship. It's about 45 feet away. I'll ask the sailor next to me. Um, you guys know your job. So if we can't get to the back side of the ship, um, when we get close enough, uh, just send someone on the boat to get it ready to sail. Right on, right on. They're, they're sweating. They're rowing as fast as they can. You see, you know, a couple of the guys kind of getting like getting ready to, to make a jump and start climbing. Um, I'm depending on you. <laughs> bunch of the guards are man four more failures. They just cannot get through the Caltrip minefield. <laughs> One of the ones that made it through picks up a bow, moves forward and fires, but misses with a six. Um, this brings us then to Siler. Yeah. You're, you're, you could see the, the, the looming uh, side of the, the ship mm -hmm. with your dark vision. Yeah. Um, you're 30 feet away. So your, your, your guys are hustling. Yeah. Well, I'm still going to for uh, after the air uh, Bozeman, as I can see. Well, I mean, you could see the guy that just moved who you see one of the bowmen is swatting something. Well, actually, you wouldn't be able to see because that's more than 60 feet away. You, you see, like, one of them seems to be distracted. The other mm -hmm. one that just shot and missed is, is yeah. they're, well, they're the, the ones the one that are... In the, in the front is the one with the hunter's mark on him. Yeah. I'm going after him again. Okay. Now, finally, uh, that's a 21. That's a hit. What's the damage? With four plus the D6 for the hunter's mark. That's probably enough to drop him. Plus another five. Oh, yeah. So. He drops. You see, he was like waving at something, and then he's like, your, your arrow hits him, and he's like, oh, and he falls back. Um, Finally. This brings us to Angler. Your boat hits the side of the your rowboat hits the side of the ship. Uh, and the, there's there's no easy way to get up here other than a straight athletics to climb. Uh, unless you happen to have a grappling hook and a rope and you want to deploy that. I do not. So I'll just uh, try athletics. Mm -hmm. 20, 30, 20. Okay. You you start going fast, like you're climbing up, um, right along with the rest of the sailors. Um, you're halfway up. You guys make it halfway up. Okay, this brings us to Harley. Um, you are the last one on your rowboat. Do you want to also make a check to climb up or do you want to wait until they throw a rope down? May I miss a step on the deck? Actually, I think you can, right? What's the range? Uh, 30 feet, I think. Yep, you could. Yep, so I missed a step on the uh, so deck and... Uh, so Angler, you and the guys, you, you and the three survivors are, are climbing, or uh, no, sorry, it was only two. 
you and the, you and your two guys are climbing up and you're like halfway and you look up and you see Harley and his top hat. Oh no, you lost your top hat. You see <laughs> yeah. Harley looking down and he's, he's on the deck. He's looking over the rail at you. What's taking you so long? <clears throat> and I command murmur to go invisible and, uh, there is uh, one guard with a bow, I think. There's one with a bow that is past the caltrops, yes. Okay. And I'll let him invisibly uh, fly uh, in such position that uh, he's in the possible way of the arrow. He's a, you know. I will think about that. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, he's he's a magically created creature. He doesn't die. He just comes back looking different. He's magically delicious. <laughs> yeah, but he's also an imp, and imps are yeah. not inclined to. Yeah, it's true. To to fall on a sword necessarily, but well, I'll I'll think about that. Or maybe just to grab an arrow as soon as the guy's shooting it. Or something like that. Indeed. Um, Ushun, you're up next. You're getting closer. Your ship's still 30 feet away. Um, the guards. Um, would I be able to throw a... Um grappling hook that far uh well no next round okay. you could because okay then i'm 30 feet away and it's 30 feet up okay then i will um prepare my grappling hook and ask ask another sailor if they want to throw it or if they they just say i i could okay um you prepare the guards on the Pier are still caught, caught up. One made it through. Um, and then two guys move to the very end with bows. Um, and both of them missed a three and a nine. So this brings us to Siler. Mm -hmm. You're 15 feet away. You're, you're in your boat. Your men are hustling. Yep. Um, any of the bowmen in range that I can see him? Between Darfish um, and the light. So you are 105 feet away from the edge of the pier where the two bowmen just got to. So technically... Oh, you can you have 600 range if needed. Yeah. Probably a disadvantage, but... No, so I mean, they're within your range dim lighting I mean they're outside of your dark vision but they you know you you basically could take shots off if you wanted yeah they're, they're kind of silhouetted by the moonlight and the some of the lantern running. light behind them yeah um, I'm gonna shift my hunter's mark to over to the one of them <clears throat> and then oh boy uh, seven plus four is eleven. Was 11 hit on the, on, the, no. on the one guy? Nope. That's a shame. It wasn't eight plus damage. All right. Is the other one standing close enough for a second yes. round? They're right next to each other. See that? Now that's a 14. That's a hit. So that takes, uh, yeah, there's no, no thing. That's uh, six damage. Okay. He falls back. Not dead, but very much in pain. Yeah, I'm going through my arrows quickly. <laughs> um, angler. Climbing up the rest of the way. Make that athletics roll. Seven. Seven? Seven. <laughs> athletics Splash. is my strong suit. Splash. Let's see if your boys make it. Oh, look at that. One falls and one makes it. All right. Um, one makes it up to the top 
and he he gets up next to you, Harley, and he says, uh, "Grab that rope, throw it overboard, so they could climb." Mm. And he's um, so you've got one of your crewmen in the water, and as you are there, um, Siler's boat pulls up. Um, and they start getting ready to disembark. They are waiting for the rope to get thrown over, um, which brings us to Ushun. Your boat is rowing closer. It is now only 15 feet away. De deploy the grappling hook. Okay, go ahead and make an athletics check for me. Ready Wish I could see without my glasses. Well, I know you have proficiency in it. I oh yeah. I mean, this is, is huge. 26. Oh yeah. All right. So you you whip the grappling hook around and then you release it. And you hear it and see it successfully hook onto the top rail. And you, you give it a firm pull and you start pulling the boat closer to the ship. And next round, you can effectively act as an anchor while the guys use yes. your rope to climb up. Exactly what I was going to do. Um, you are done. Now the guys on the docks. This could be the clutch moment, people. Uh, four, 10, and 16. So the 16 is the question here. One, two. Um, uh, Harley, 16 to hit. Yep. Take four hit points. Okay. Did you make it to the back side of the ship? No. You notice that all of the sailors uh, are more inclined to just get on the ship than to row around to the backside. All right. Um, but in this moment, uh, Siler, you are now up to close out this round. Mm -hmm. um... So you you see you see Harley throwing down a, a heavy rope, yeah, and like Angler and some of the other sailors are climbing that. And you see Ushun pulling uh, a rope that she secured taut with a grappling hook. And as her boat's skidding in next round, they're going to start climbing up. So, yeah. Um, could I stow my bow and get my own uh, rope and grappling hook and throw it up? Um, yes, you could. I'll do that. Make an athletics check. DC 10. Pretty easy since it's right above you. Yeah, twenty-two. Okay. If you just to be clear, if you roll the one, I would have totally had you fish hook Harley and <laughs> accidentally pull him into the railing. But um, you you yeah. successfully latch on and you start uh, you could start climbing next round. Yeah, start climbing, uh, boys. So you you sling it, get your rope out, whip it up, and you can start climbing. Um, yeah. Top of the order, angler. You gotta climb on that rope. Yeah. So down. you now that you have a rope, you and your guy, you you all start climbing. You get up. Um, no rolls necessary. You make it up 15 feet. Um, Harley, you're at the top. You can see everything. As you see the rest of the crew all climbing up these different ropes now. Um, you are 120 feet precisely from the longbowmen who are at the edge of the pier. Oh. I know it's dark, but uh, may I have some idea where the capstan is, like the like the no. wheel that's holding the anchor? Um, you you do, um, and you see the guy. Remember the guy that climbed up next to you and told you to throw the rope? You see him going over there this round. Uh. Okay, is there any chance I can uh, smash the chain that's holding the anchor with the Eldritch Blast? No. 
So because, in this case, uh, little known fact, Eldritch Blast does not impact. Let me just double check that. I feel like Eldritch Blast does not impact things, well, even though it's force it, damage. It has force damage. Does it? Yeah. So I, I presume that when it's force damage, it may. Yeah, I guess you're right. It does. It can. It's energy. But in I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, how much HP uh, the chain has. So, uh, go ahead. Roll damage. I, I'll try to shoot that. So, oh, where's my die? And it's whoa, thirteen. Okay, you blast at some of the links. Um, and I and I run towards the captain just to be. A closer and B uh, if it's not uh, enough to blast it off to help the sailor to roll it next turn Maybe in, also in the process of um, you know, dealing with uh, the anchor, I call back the murmur. Rules as written, Eldritch Blast cannot target objects. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Uh, so same I will, so for I will... other spells unless they specify otherwise, i.e. Okay. Firebolt. Okay, so... And, and here's the only reason why I, as many people maybe don't know, I play warlocks a lot and I often would make the justification. Let me just think about this. When I'm playing a warlock, I like to think that Eldritch Blast could blast things. It could blast into a door. And I've often been shut down by DMs who tell me that rules as written mean that I can't use my Eldritch Blast with force damage. Um, against it says it's, uh, you talk about the creature, so yeah, but I'm I've always thought, like, why wouldn't it be able to blast into an object? Yeah, but because other, it's other... meant for creatures, right? Um, sage advice says Eldritch Blast and similar can't cast on objects at all. How do you justify this with flavor? Some spells are drawn to or harm only the life force of creatures. You're not shooting projectiles. The definition of force damage, not of force itself, is pure magical energy focused into a damaging form. Hmm. Repelling blast causes a spell that harms creatures to also hurl them. This is not a function of the damage type. Okay, if it's not possible, I'll just help the sailor. <laughs> Sorry, I've gone off into a tangent because it bothers me. It bothers me that it doesn't do that damage, but we're going to say that it, it's just we're going to stick with that. So, Okay, so I'll help, help the sailor too. Okay. All right. Um, so you guys are all climbing. The rest of the crew, Ushun, you're climbing. Um, Siler, you get to the top. Basically, everybody who is able to get onto a rope can make it onto the deck. As you are now making it onto the deck, the crew quickly works to get the sails unfurled. Um, I am making three rolls at disadvantage, and not, none of them succeed. So you hear arrows hitting the side of the ship but none of them are hitting any of your people. And what happens in the next few minutes is uh, your, your sailors work like a well-oiled machine, as if perhaps they have stolen ships before. <laughs> they, they, cut, they cut out a lot of steps, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost as if they don't really care 
about the longevity of this ship, just getting the sails unfurled and getting it going. And it is at, uh, this takes several minutes. What do you guys want to do out of initiative order? I'm going to call on each one of you one at a time to tell me what you're doing while the sailors are getting this ship ready to go. Um, we'll start with uh, Angler. Sorry, you what? Um, I'm, you're muted, buddy. I can't hear you. Or you're either. correct. There we go. I said I was going to uh, help the sailors and just uh, in my brain, I'm the captain, but I can't say anything. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Fair enough. Um, Harley. Okay. At first, I'm helping the sailors and uh, then I yell, okay, guys, I'm the captain now. <laughs> and I'm searching the... Uh, upper deck for the tricorn hat. <laughs> oh, um, all right. I'll let you make an investigation roll. Okay. Investigation. <laughs> it's uh, 16. Really? Yep. 13 plus three. He really wants that hat. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm like, it's fine. It's totally fine. Um, I'm going to say that you find, uh, you find, you don't find the hat, but you find the door to the captain's cabin. Um, and it is unlocked. So, so I look, you, you go I in, you, you see the captain's cabin looks pretty much undisturbed. You see there's you know, what, what you would traditionally see, some navigational equipment in there, um, rolled up maps uh, and, and some ledger books. And you actually see a wooden peg on the wall that has a um, knee length jacket and a leather tricorn hat. Okay, I'll take that. I'll, I'll put it on. Do you still appear as a dwarf? Um, I presume that uh, when I'm uh, searching the deck, I'll turn back into my default form. Um, okay. All right. I'm going to say that that takes you a couple minutes in total. Um, let's see. What is Siler doing? Um, <clears throat> as long as we're in range... Uh, I'm just going to be um, looking towards the docks with my bow out. Um, if anything can be hit, I'll try and take a shot at him. And once, once we're well and truly out of harm's way, uh, I'll see if, uh, ask if I can help in any way. Do you want to make any... You can make rolls at disadvantage, as many as you have arrows for. All right. Um... I am going to go for a couple of rounds. Okay. Disadvantage. Get me two of them. Uh, that's a six as the lowest for 10. Mm, still a miss. All right. That's a 13 as lowest. Okay. And that takes Hit. seven. All right, you drop a guy. Make me just one more. That's an 11 as lowest. Okay. So as, as you are kind of picking off a few people, uh, Ushun, what are you doing for these couple minutes? I'm going to go up to the capstan. And uh, is there a scrawny sailor there? Uh, every sailor is working. So, okay. and many of them are scrawny. Well, I'm going to say, can I have a go at that? Sure. Okay. Athletics. Yep. Okay. That is 19. I just want to make it go faster. Okay. 
So your your help actions basically between you and and you know angler and and kind of like as you guys are kind of helping the crew with just some of the menial tasks that allows them to focus on getting this ship going um and you are happy to hear the sounds of the sails um catching wind and then you're surprised when you see one of the sailors um who is standing next to the main sail has his hands out and he's whispering words and you see this powerful wind just blowing billowing out from him as he's speaking up at the sail and the sail catches the wind and the bolt the entire ship kind of like bolts forward um to to the extent where you guys kind of like have to grab onto a rail and then once it's going it's it continues to move and he's he's like concentrating and speaking these words and this wind is just magically emanating from him um, and you notice that the other sailors are again are working like a well-oiled machine um, due to the loss of a couple of their brethren though they have kind of you know a couple of them have given you guys like menial tasks like you know tie this rope off or you know go open up this hatch and that kind of stuff so you guys make it out of the bay of flan and you are now in the moon sea um I'm going to have to say that um, the inspiration point that gets carried over um, into the next session goes to Tyler for the caltrips. Is that is that fair to everybody? Yeah. Uh, because I will say that had you not slowed down the progression of the guards, you most assuredly would have been sustaining a lot more damage. Um, but all of you, effectively, after about a half an hour, you you are sailing through the moon sea at night. Um, you you see one of the sailors who has a bit of navigational ability is is kind of up by the helm, and he's you know he's kind of pointing out the directions based on his knowledge of the stars. And um, you know one of the guys who looks a little more experienced is at the helm. Um, and you see one of the sailors who's maybe you figure like a half elf. Um, she climbed up to the crow's nest and she's, she's got a, a looking glass and you see that she's like looking out kind of in all directions, sort of to, to see what's around you guys. Well, now um, that things have gone down a bit. I'm going to yeah. search out that one guy that took that lost arrow and see if I can fix him up again. <clears throat> yes. Um, if you have the ability or spells slots yeah. to do so, that would help. He's going to get another healing word. Okay. Uh, cure wounds, I mean. All right. How many hit points? That's a D, uh, that's a D8. Let's see. <laughs> Seven. Uh, no, sorry, nine. Oh, he's totally a, fine. He is. Yeah, he only had eight do uh, two down, so. <laughs> yeah, he is night and day better. Um, okay, good. Ushun. Um, three things. I'm going to retrieve the grappling hook and the rope. Okay. Um. I'm going to go up to the guy I gave my dagger to and say, good job, and get my dagger back. Okay. And then I'm going to ask him, what's the name of the guy who caused the wind? I want to protect him. Oh, that's Mensrick. Mensrick is, <laughs> he's, uh, Mensrick used to be, the quartermaster actually for uh, a ship that that we sailed for um he works for the plumes i know that sometimes well i have his back if you want to let him know i i i'm a little uh afraid to talk to magic people oh. yeah he's yeah uh, i mean i've i've sailed with him a couple times he's He's definitely handy to have around in a, in a pinch. Um, now I'm going down to the galley to see what kind of food there is. 
So, uh, all right, hold on. Before you do that, um, Angler and Harley, let's see. What do you What are you guys doing now that you're out in sea? So, Angler, what do you What are you doing? Did I steal the hat from Harley? Yes. Sure. You You could try. I mean, make a sleight of hand roll. Twenty two. Um, that definitely beats his very, very feeble passive perception. So you, you have another hat that you found that is inferior in quality and you managed to switch it out, you know, kind of like the Indiana Jones bag of sand for the golden head, you, you kind of switch it out. And like, so Harley, you're like thinking about, you know, how lucky you guys were and, and angler bumps into you and, and you, you adjust your hat and, uh, yeah, so. Okay. Despite all of this, I'll just uh, uh, sit on the deck as we are uh, sailing and I'll be singing sea shanties just to, uh, just to raise the morale. <laughs> what do we do with a drunken sailor? What do, what we, do? we do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Um, they, they actually like get into it for a minute, um, until you hear Menzrick yell down like, Hey, shut up. You fools. These <laughs> waters are quiet. Let's be still. Um, you notice that Menzrick does not seem to be like a captain per se, but the men tend to listen to him. Um, all of you guys before Ushun does what she does all of you make a uh i'm gonna say make a perception roll let me know what the results are 18 oh six six <laughs> High five, so brother. i will describe six. again <laughs> you are you know the ship is moving it's you're sailing at night the sound of of the ship cruising across the waves um, it, it's, it's a little overcast, but the moon is in the sky. You could still see the stars and you are out at the moon sea. Um, Ushun, you, what, what did you have for your perception check? Six. <laughs> yeah. Well, three, really six. Anything out of ordinary. Uh, Harley, as you are getting these sea shanties going, you, the smell of being at the sea is inspiring to you, but you get an undertone of something else. Like just for one moment, like there's like kind of a cross draft and you see the hatch that leads down to the lower levels. Um, a ship this size you figure has, you know, a, a level below where there are rooms for the, the sailors and possibly some, you know, some kind of galley or mess hall. Um, and then below that would be the cargo hold. And you notice that that, that hatch has not been opened, but you see Ushun kind of walking over there as if she's considering going down and you just kind of got a smell that didn't seem right to you. What's the smell as the men's Rick, uh, uh, you don't see anybody as seem as to men's notice Rick, this. As, as the men's Rick shushed us, uh, yeah. I'll try to investigate that hatch. Um, okay, you walk over by Ushun. Ushun, you see Harley approach you as you're walking over towards the hatch. The, the, the doors that open, the two doors that open to the hatch that covers the stairs, um, you, you notice that the handles are there and that there's a, a chain and a lock that's placed around them. I look at the door and I say, I, I utter a swear word in orc. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to grab the food first. You got your hat. And I look at it. Yeah, you notice that he's and, not wearing uh, the fancy yeah, hat. Yeah, I don't say anything. I'm going to get the food, okay? Uh, so you're trying to get into the hatch. Yeah. But it's locked. I suppose I could break it, but 
Well, I locked I, for a reason. I smell something foul from here. I'm not sure we should go in there. The, there may be the cargo because of which the ship was quarantined. Okay, is there a cargo hatch? Or is that the cargo hatch? No, there's there's definitely in the center of the ship, there's a really big hatch. Um, okay. Do you, do you go over there? Yeah, I'll take a look at that. Okay. Um, you notice that this seems to have there there's there's basically like a um a sheet of wood that has been placed over the hatch. Mm. It's, it's not fastened or locked. All right. You lift it off. Nah, uh, heck with all this. It's too much work. Where's the want, captain's quarters? If you want something to eat, here, have this. And I uh, hand Ushun some Russians <laughs> I have. I've, I've got my own, okay? Okay. I'm going to look for a place to lay down. Well, there's one cabin right underneath the helm, mm -hmm. which you assume is the captain's quarters. I'm going there. Okay. There's, there's a, a bunk, a nice sized bunk actually um a lot better than the the crew bunks and um like i said there's you see you know some like a, a desk chair um some navigational equipment on a table bunch of maps and a few ledgers well i pick something up and see if i break it i have a tendency to do that just something stupid on his desk. Okay. Um, so athletics or strength check? Sure. Uh, my strength check is 16. You successfully break um, a, uh, a small ceramic cup, perhaps used for tea. Mm. Um, and accidentally smash it when you pick it up. And okay. um, I'll just put the halberd down by the side of the bed and lay on that. Okay. Meanwhile, Take off um, my backpack and stuff. Harley, you you when you were over by both the the hatch that's locked to go downstairs and the the cargo hold um, hatch. That smell um, was more pungent. It was stronger. Okay, I'll try to put my ear on the hatch and listen if there's something that's maybe moving or... You don't anything, hear anything. Anything strange. Okay. So I'll just uh, stroll uh, on the deck and uh, be careful. Uh, so that uh, nobody uh, try to open it. I'm afraid of the contagion, so. Okay. All right. Um, Angler, anything else that you're doing? No, just okay. walking around. And Siler, anything else that you were doing? Uh, I was planning on uh, going roaming around, see if I can spot any arrows to replenish my uh, quiver. Oh, I will make a roll for that. Let's see how many of your arrows can be recouped. I give him the, the ones that stuck into me if they're in any good shape. <laughs> yeah. I'm... There are 12 arrows total that you can recover. All right. That's, um, that's helpful. Okay, is anyone else going to be doing a short or a long rest? Well, I'm probably doing the short rest as I'm uh, on the deck. And uh, maybe as I'm seeing Angler with the captain's hat on his head, I pick my own 
look at it as well, it's tricorn and put it back on my head. Okay. Fair enough. Um, anybody else taking rests or staying on watch? So, Ushun, you're taking uh, rest? Yeah, I took 14 hit points during that. Okay. So I'll oh. just rest. Oh, oh, save it, save it. I'm going to find a nice place and uh, go meditate for a while. Okay. By form of long rest. All right. So you guys uh, spend several hours sailing through the moon sea at night. Um, your crew uh, managing to keep the ship going despite being, you know, bare, bare minimum required crew uh, for a ship of this size. And um, you will continue to sail through the night. But we are going to end this episode here. So make sure that you tune in. Make sure that you like and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss the next episode of Moon Sea Adventures. Thanks for watching. And as always, thank you to my patrons and subscribers for your support. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace out. It's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things.